Listen to part of a lecture in a history class. The 19th century was a time of many important events in the history of the United States. One of the most pivotal, which occurred near the start of the century in 1803, was the Louisiana Purchase, the name given to the U.S. government's purchase from France of approximately 830,000 square miles of the Louisiana Territory, named after the French King Louis XIV, the Sun King. This territory stretched from the Mississippi River in the east to the Rocky Mountains in the west, and from Canada in the north to the Gulf of Mexico in the south. It included not only the present-day states of Arkansas, Iowa, Kansas, Missouri, Nebraska, and Oklahoma, but also parts of the present-day states of Colorado, Louisiana, of course, Minnesota, Montana, New Mexico, North and South Dakota, Texas, and Wyoming. The purchase had important implications for the U.S., not just at the time, but continuing down to the present day. Indeed, it's been described as one of the three most important events upon which the continental power of the modern United States is founded. So why was the Louisiana Purchase so important? Well, for one thing, it gave the United States greater control over its own continent. For most of the second half of the 18th century, American politicians were concerned about which country controlled Louisiana. For much of that period, Louisiana was controlled by France. But after the Spanish defeated the French in the so-called Seven Years' War, from the mid-1750s to 1763, it was controlled by Spain until 1800, when the French again took control. The U.S. government wanted to get ownership of this land, so as not to have a European power controlling territory in continental North America. It also wanted access to the port of New Orleans to facilitate trade. However, it was assumed by most Americans, including Thomas Jefferson, under whose presidency the purchase was actually completed, that it would be necessary to acquire this vast territory little by little. And, in fact, the U.S. government's original plan for the purchase was just to purchase the port of New Orleans and its adjacent lands. When negotiations between the U.S. and France began, however, Jefferson was soon offered the chance to buy the entire Louisiana Territory. There was some opposition to the purchase among politicians, who claimed that the U.S. Constitution did not grant the right to acquire territory through purchase. Jefferson accepted this viewpoint, but argued that, as the purchase was in the form of a treaty, and as the Constitution granted him, as president, power to negotiate treaties, then the purchase was, in fact, constitutional. On this basis, he agreed to the pay a sum of over $11 million to cancel French debts worth almost $4 million. This total of $15 million is equivalent to approximately a quarter of a billion in today's terms. Another important effect of the Louisiana Purchase is that it virtually doubled the size of the young United States, without the need for wars or conquests. This showed other nations that the United States was willing to use peaceful diplomacy to resolve international disputes. It also contributed to a stronger sense of nationalism than had been apparent before. In simple terms, Americans began to take more pride in their country, to feel that it was strong and globally important. And the land that formed the Louisiana Territory was not just vast. It had ample supplies of valuable natural resources including gold, silver, and other ores, vast forests that could be cut down for timber, and much of the land was ideally suited for agriculture, with rich soil and a pleasant climate. Taken together, these factors vastly increased the wealth of the United States. Question 29. What is the professor's main purpose in giving the lecture? Question 30. According to the professor, 
which modern-day states were wholly within the Louisiana Territory at the time of its purchase? Choose three answers. Question 31. When did France take over control of the Louisiana Territory from Spain? Question 32. Listen again to part of the lecture. What does the professor imply? There was some opposition to the purchase among politicians who claimed that the U.S. Constitution did not grant the right to acquire territory through purchase. Jefferson accepted this viewpoint, but argued that as the purchase was in the form of a treaty, and as the Constitution granted him, as president, power to negotiate treaties, then the purchase was, in fact, constitutional. Question 33. Listen again to part of the talk. On this basis, he agreed to the pay a sum of over $11 million to cancel French debts worth almost $4 million. This total of $15 million is equivalent to approximately a quarter of a billion in today's terms. Why does the professor say this? This total of 15 million is equivalent to approximately a quarter of a billion in today's terms. Question 34. What impacts of the Louisiana Purchase does the professor mention? 